here, the Frugal Crafter, and today we're gonna paint a flamingo. And this is actually the first time I ever used this paper. I didn't know I did share a um, video where I did some roses on this paper, but this is the first time I actually have used this watercolor paper. I'm also using some really inexpensive watercolors. These are the Yarka student grade paints that are found in tubes. Um, I did several packages. I love these paints. Oh my goodness. We had a local art shop that sold these and I just loved them. I bought probably two or three packages over the years and um, these paints are all at least 15 years old. They're wonderful though and they're still available so I'll put a link in the video description. So what I'm doing actually is I've added some uh, crimson to my brush and I've picked up some water because it was pretty bright and pretty much just kind of sketched in the body and neck and head of a flamingo. And now I'm adding more a stronger color where I want the um, the feathers to be a little bit more pinker. The brush I'm using is a Royal and Langnickel Aqualon uh, number 10 round. And these brushes can be found inexpensively on Amazon or in most craft stores. So if you have an AC Moore or a Michaels handy, you should be able to find these brushes and probably at other stores too, I'm just not familiar with and they're usually available in money-saving sets or individually. So uh, now I'm picking up a little bit of yellow, I believe it's cad yellow hue, and just kind of dropping some color in because flamingos really have more of a corally color than a bright pink. Um, actually, just saw some flamingos up at the Magnetic Hill Zoo up in New Brunswick this weekend, and I couldn't believe that, uh, how beautiful they were, and you could get real close to them. And it's so funny because the ducks <laughs> kind of overtook their area, and they didn't seem to mind one bit. So I'm pulling that yellow color down to make the legs. I am going to go in with some darker color, but I just wanted to kind of wet the pathway for that. I, this is the first time I used this paper, so I wasn't sure if it was going to take wet and to wet washes very well. I really didn't know what to expect, so this is me really just experimenting with it. And um, I didn't even attempt to do a voiceover live while I painted it because um, I was experimenting and figuring out how it was going to go and how I was going to like it. So this is like a phthalo blue, I believe. Actually, it's called turquoise in the kit, but it's kind of like a phthalo blue. Um, and I'm mixing up some of the um, crimson in there, making like a real deep purple. I find that that makes a nice, almost faux black color when I am uh, working with limited palette. And it's also a nice lively color too. So um, I'm getting the, the feet in there. I did kind of um, get a little too close to the bottom, but hey, I'm experimenting. And I'm also adding some of that purple wherever I would want a really dark color, such as um, the bottom of those feathers. And also I'm gonna get the beak in here at this point uh, because I wanted to be able to have that really dark bottom of the beak where it bends. And I'm just kind of sketching that in with a smaller brush. This is a number six round. Um, it's kind of a no-name brand. It just happens to be a really nice quality. It came in one of my smart art boxes. Um, but any sort of, you know, nice pointy, you smaller round brush will be great for the details. You really don't have to be too particular. That's the thing I'm finding about this paper is it is just a wonderful thing if you want to experiment and have some spontaneous effects. I just love what the pigment and water does on the surface. The size of this paper is five by seven. I tore it down from a large sheet that I picked up at an art supply store. Um, and I think I got about 16 five by seven sheets uh, out of it. And the nice thing about tearing down a large sheet is that all of your sheets are going to have these pretty deckled edges. And uh, what I like to do is basically just cut a piece of mat board uh, a little bit larger, like to the next size up that would be a standard frame size, such as eight by 10. And then I'll just glue that down um, on the mat board because it's acid free and it's protective. And if somebody wants to mat over that, they certainly can uh, after someone purchases it. But it shows off the deckle edge, which I really love, and it's a very easy way to um, to display, and you don't have to know how to cut beveled mats to do it that way. So that would be my tip. The paper is called Shazan. It's an Indian uh, recycled paper made from 100% cotton rag, and from the um, information that viewers have given me, they've said that this is usually made from the offcuts from the fa fabric industry in India. So uh, anyway, what a, however it is made, it is just lovely, and um, and I'm really enjoying it. So I mixed up some of that yellow with some of the turquoise to make this pretty green. Um, I found that it just looked as, it looked as pretty, if not prettier, than the green that came in the kit. So um, I'm just kind of filling in, adding some little bits of grass here and there. I'm going to add some water. I'm really just playing. Um, I don't really have anything to, to go by as far as a reference other than a snapshot that I took of some flamingos. So um, I'm kind of just fudging it and making it up as, a go, as I go along. But the cool thing about a quick painting, I mean, 
in real time, this took me about seven minutes to paint, is that you could do this as a greeting card. And, um, you know, it would, so who wouldn't love to get that in the mail? It's so cheerful and fun and, um, and it's, it's fun to paint, fun to receive. I'm just extending that background higher up into the paper. Um, I found that I really, this is where I discovered that I loved working wet and wet with this paper. Uh, so I wet little areas and then I would make the grass right above the wet areas and let some of it kind of seep in. And then I'd add some of the blue, some of that turquoise in there and let it flood around. So the colors I've used here are the crimson, uh, the turquoise, and the yellow. And that's it. You mix all your colors from that and you have a really lovely range. And that's why I love these student grade paints by Yarka because you are able to mix so many beautiful colors from such a limited amount. Now I let the paint dry and I came back and I decided I would put a little uh, detail in here. Now you can use your heat tool if you wanna dry it quicker. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably what I did. Um, and now I'm going in with the crimson on its own and I am just kind of adding in some of those deeper red feathers and just kind of adding a little definition here and there. Um, I don't think there's any more shift when it dries on this paper as any other paper, but it does seem like um, the, the vibrancy is reduced a little bit. I think this paper is a little more absorbent than your typical watercolor paper where the watercolor stays on top of the paper. This definitely absorbs a little bit more when you're working wet into wet. So kind of keep that in mind that, you know, it, it is gonna lighten up and um, become a little bit less luminant. But then when you go over with your next layer, I find that you get all that um, luminosity back. So the best thing to do when you're trying a new paper, especially something that's handmade, like this rough handmade paper from India, is to experiment on it. And uh, by buying a big sheet, it wasn't that expensive. Um, I was able to tear it down into 16 pieces so I'd have plenty to experiment with. And that's what I did this day, actually, just tore down the paper and, and had fun with it. And uh, I really encourage you to do the same anytime you're in a painting rut or you just feel like uh, you wanna play. It's a great way because you don't know what to expect. Hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share this with other friends that would enjoy this painting tutorial too. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.